Okay, let's talk about terminal velocity. So first of all, um, what I would suggest is there's this wonderful video on uh, YouTube. It's by uh, this scientist, this wonderful physicist. His name is Brian Cox. So, C-O-X. So when he actually, um, in the video what he does is they basically do this experiment where they take this chamber, which is the size of a building, and then they turn it into an entire vacuum. And they have this red ball, right? If you watch the video, it's this really nice video. They have this red ball and they have a bunch of feathers. And um, what they do is... Uh -huh. I'm looking the video of the film. Uh -huh. comments, yeah. yeah, you could, you could, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have these feathers, and they drop the drop the two together in a vacuum. And what they show is this really nice video of them both hitting. There's this little box at the bottom. They both hit the ground at the same time. So yes, obviously they pull the air out, and then it shows the ball and the feathers hit the hit the thing together. Yes, that's it. So yes, you can send the link to them. Is so, the huh? BBC one? Sorry, what? Is it the BBC one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the BBC one. So um, it's like a five minute video. We're going to link it into the comments. I would suggest that uh, you guys go and watch it. It's really nice. It explains the whole vacuum concept thing wonderfully. So now what happens if you drop an object through a vacuum? If you drop it through a vacuum, you get a really simple uh, concept that you drop an object. The only force acting is weight mg. And this causes the object to constantly accelerate downwards because that's the only resultant force. And as a result, what happens is, um, if this is the velocity and if this is the time, then you get this graph, which is basically a straight line. That's supposed to be a straight line. And the gradient of this line is going to be g, right? Because the acceleration of the object is g. So this is the sort of graph you get, and the gradient is going to be g. And the reason is because the acceleration is constant at g. And the force is always going to be constant at mg. The, the concept of terminal velocity is that um, if this is what happens if you drop something in a vacuum, it constantly accelerates. So if the tube is long enough, it will accelerate forever. So that's similar to what happens if you were to drop something in space. By the way, guys, there's this really interesting misconception that almost everyone has, and it pisses me off. If this is the Earth, all right, listen to this carefully. If this is the Earth... Another question. Huh? What? Another question. You know the question? It was the first question you asked us at the time. Uh -huh. and the first class physics that we had with you. And it triggered everyone, did it? I don't know. It triggered me. You just asked. Mm -hmm. In a trivia. And I was like, so nice about it. Yeah. It's all right, guys. That's absolutely the wrong concept. All right, so this is art. If this is art... Um, the air of atmosphere. What? This is the air of atmosphere. Yes, the atmosphere is even m much more thinner than this blue uh, line I'm trying to draw around this deformed Earth. The atmosphere is way, way thinner than this. So when you say you take something to space, right? <laughs> say this this point here. Is it a vacuum, Maksud? It is. Yes. So if it's in a vacuum, does that mean there's no gravity? Um, not necessarily. Exactly. Got that, guys? Just being in space, in, in a vacuum outside the atmosphere, doesn't necessarily mean there's no gravity. There is the gravitational force of attraction. However, the point that you need to know is that this force of attraction is not, uh, is not being affected. The force is not being affected by air resistance because it's outside the atmosphere. Please remember that. And yes, as you go further and further up, the gravitational field does become weaker and weaker. But that's for A-levels. But the point is that just because right outside the atmosphere it's a vacuum does not necessarily mean that uh, there's no gravity. It just becomes weaker with a lot of distance. All right. So coming back to the concept of terminal velocity. So again, I'll draw it one more time. If you have um, the velocity versus time graph and if it's an object traveling through a vacuum, then it would be a straight line. Right. However, the thing is that uh, this is not what we see when you drop something in air, right? Basically, from uh, in the questions, all right, what they're going to do is they're going to say something like drop from a great height, great height. or drop from a building, building. or drop, yes, tall building, or drop from plane, box drop from plane. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to draw a plane, Maksud. It's a rocket. Uh, oh, that's a weird plane, but like, you know, how do I get myself in these situations? All right, so plane. So drop from plane. So box drop from plane. So what happens is any of these situations is it's going to cause air resistance to have a significant effect. So now what I'm going to do is what I always uh, do when I teach terminal velocity is I'm going to draw this uh, set of patterns, all right? And uh, you should understand what they mean. 
So say, for example, we drop an object and it falls, right? So as it falls, what's going to happen is air resistance increases with time, while the value of g remains constant. So say this is the moment 1, this is the moment you just let it go, and then you have moment 2, moment 3, moment 4, somewhere along the line, say at moment 4, it becomes a constant velocity. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the ball for each position. Say this is 1, this is a ball, right? And then say 2, and then say 3, 4, and then say 1 more 5. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw um, for each position, I'm going to draw the forces acting on it, right? So air resistance, I'm going to use a blue arrow to show it, a blue line. So the velocity, the moment you let it go, the velocity is 0 meters per second, which means what? Air resistance doesn't act. Air resistance depends on how fast you're moving. If you're moving really fast, air resistance is going to be really high. If you're not moving, then air resistance won't act. So there's no air resistance for one. As you start speeding up because of the acceleration, air resistance will start to increase, right? You'll have a greater and greater value of air resistance. So it's going to be like this. I'll use green to represent the weight and say the weight's value is this much. The weight will always remain the same. So as the weight remains the same, what we can draw as the next graph is basically the resultant force, okay? I'm going to use uh, red to represent the resultant force. The resultant force here is equal to the weight, right? But as you start speeding up, the resultant force will decrease. Why is that? Because basically these two are going to cancel each other out. Basically this much is going to cancel out a certain fraction of the weight. And then this is going to cancel out even more of it, and then even more of it, and then eventually it becomes zero. So basically um, this is what happens. So as this increases like this, uh, the air resistance increases, the weight remains the same, the resultant force hence decreases. And we know F is equal to MA, right? So that means if the resultant force decreases, then the acceleration must also decrease. So if I was to draw a graph, I'll, I'll just move this here, put this paper underneath that so I can continue onto this paper, right? Okay, so um, looking at this resultant force, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now start drawing different sorts of graphs. So first I'm going to draw uh, the resulting acceleration graph that you're going to get. So if I was to draw that, what would it look like? I hope you guys can see this pretty clearly. So as we know, F is equal to MA. Uh, there's going to be acceleration as long as there's a resultant force. However, if the resultant force drops to zero, then the acceleration is going to drop to zero too. So it's going to be, initially it's going to be a G, because that's the only force acting weight. It's going to cause an acceleration of G. And then it's going to decrease. The decrease should be like this. Ooh. And then eventually, it touches the x-axis at this point. Basically, the acceleration drops to zero at, say, 0.5. I did say it's reaching terminal velocity at 4, but let's just say it reaches terminal velocity at 5, all right? Makes life easier. So this is the graph that you would get. So what does this graph show? That the acceleration gradually decreases. And hence, if I was to draw from this the resulting velocity time graph, what would that look like? So I'll use a different color now, orange maybe. And uh, if I show the velocity time graph, what would that look like? The velocity initially will increase at the value of g. Basically, the gradient of this graph is, oops, time. The gradient of the graph initially at time 0 is going to be g. But it very quickly decreases because the resultant force is decreasing. And then it goes like this, 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 and it becomes straight right at the same time. So this is the graph that you would get. So basically, these are the two graphs you get. One is for acceleration, and another is for velocity. And this velocity that it reaches, which is a constant velocity, is terminal velocity. That's it, simple as that. So there's a few points that I need to mention with this. So one of the most common questions that uh, they love asking is, uh, what's going to happen if you take a parachutist and uh, they jump out of the plane, right? This is, say, the plane, side of the plane, the door in the plane. And a, the parachutist jumps out, right? So we have a parachutist, that's a parachute, and he jumps out and he starts falling, right? So, what? <laughs> I know what you're going to ask them to part. Uh, Maksud. So, um, as a parachutist falls, 
um, he's gonna uh, he's gonna slow down. No, no, sorry, not slow down. He's gonna speed up, but his acceleration is gonna decrease. A very important thing here is the wording of this. So, how would you draw the graph? It would look like this. So, what's decreasing here is the acceleration. So, what you have to write is the acceleration is decreasing, or the velocity is increasing at a decreasing rate. Right? That's the important point. The velocity is increasing at a decreasing rate, and that leads to a constant velocity eventually when the velocity increases at a decreasing rate while the increasing velocity eventually reaches zero so how, what's happening to the acceleration it is simply decreasing what is happening to the velocity it's not slowing down it is increasing but the amount of increase with time is becoming smaller and smaller eventually becomes zero so say he reaches terminal velocity at a point at a, in his flight and then he pulls open his parachute right I'll draw a nice little parachute right so that's his parachute so the moment uh, he opens the parachute, what happens is, right before he opens it, uh, say here, we let's draw him again, right here, the resultant force and the weight are equal. Sorry, not the resultant force, the air resistance and the weight are equal. The moment he opens the parachute, what happens is, he has this huge air resistance and the same weight that he had previously. This causes him to accelerate upwards, but he doesn't move upwards, right? Everyone's like, you know, everyone thinks he jumps on the plane, da -da 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 -da, he falls, 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 and then when he opens the parachute, he moves up a little bit, like, boop, it moves up, and then starts moving back down again. That doesn't happen. Please remember that. That's an extremely important thing, that uh, that does not happen. If that was to happen, if he went, like, you know, a little bit up, then what would happen to the air resistance? It would start acting upwards, right? So that's not what happens. The force... Uh, the air resistance will be higher, which causes him to dis rapidly slow down, but he does not move up. Please remember this. So, uh, basically what happens is, he just accelerates upwards, which means he rapidly decelerates. So, um, the velocity is zero because he just jumped out of the plane. At that instant, it's zero. So, what happens to our graph here is, the moment he opens the parachute, he has a rapid deceleration and reaches a new terminal velocity with the parachute open. Right? This would be one terminal velocity without the parachute, and this would be a new terminal velocity with the parachute open. So, and then he continues going down to the ground at a lower terminal velocity. Right? So, say, like, you know, this is going to be much less than this. Here, for example, uh, the average person falls at a speed of around 200 kilometers per hour. So, yeah, nobody wants to hit the ground at that speed. At least, most of us don't want to hit the ground at that speed. And um, here the speed is much lower, it's more like 5-6 km per hour, or maximum say 5-10 to 10 km per hour. So you can vary the speed based on the parachute that you're using and blah blah blah. So basically it's much safer to hit the ground at this speed, uh, you don't die basically. So we have two terminal velocities here. One is when you open the parachute, before you open the parachute, right before that time. And another is after they open the parachute and there's this rapid deceleration and then you reach this. Please, again, I'm saying the point. When the parachute is open, the person does not bump up and then start going down again. He just was going down and then slows down and goes slowly. The reason we see this is because of how they show it in movies. Uh, basically, you have some person going down at a certain speed, right? And like, you know, you know those action movies, you have two people fighting in the sky, right? Like, you know, this guy and this guy is punching each other, blah, blah, blah. Well, there's a third guy there. Do you know who? Do you know who? Um, cameraman. Yeah, the cameraman. So let's draw the cameraman. So the cameraman's job is obviously record all of this, right? They're like, you know, fighting and all of that. So like, you know, what do you happen see happen in the scene? Like, you know, one of them, they fight and then one of them either goes unconscious or the good guy uh, sees the bad guy's parachute doesn't open, some random stuff like that, and then he hugs him and then opens the parachute. So when they open the parachute, what happens is the cameraman hasn't opened his parachute yet because like, you know, they're filming. So from his perspective, suddenly this guy is moving up, but he's not moving up. What's happening is he's still moving down at the same speed while they just slowed down. So the perspective that they see is like, you know, cameraman and uh, parachute uh, movie people. So basically falling, falling, falling. He's constantly falling, but he's slowed down. So from this guy's perspective, it looks like as if he's moving up, but he's not basically slowed down. So that's basically what happens when we see terminal velocity questions. So... Uh, before we wrap up, a uh, few points that I'd like to add to all of this. Number one is uh, whenever they ask a terminal velocity question, uh, they're going to tell you like, you know, it's a small object or not so massive object or a plastic ball or a balloon, something like that, or a golf ball at a great height. 
Uh, that's point number one. And second is, the, yes, the point that I just said, great height. Whenever they say these things, you have to understand that air resistance has a significant impact. If they say something like a small lead ball or a small massive ball is dropped from a laboratory bench, so that space is really small, it's like a table or a chair. So for that height difference, it actually doesn't cause a significant impact on the change in uh, air resistance. So basically, there's no significant air resistance acting on it. And another question is, like, you know, if, if a small object and if a large object were dropped together, which one would have greater terminal velocity? So there's a very easy way of remembering this. There's more maths to it. Basically, um, if the radius increases, the surface area increases by a factor of square, while the volume increases by a factor of cube. So basically, the mass increases more than the area. So basically, the heavier one, the larger one, will drop faster at a greater terminal velocity. And even though it does have greater surface area, the surface area increases at a less rate than the mass does or the weight does, so basically that causes it to go at a faster rate. But there's an easy way of remembering this. Easy way is, imagine raindrops, oh, what the hell, imagine raindrops uh, versus mist, right? Say so like, you know, the mist you spray and stuff. So they're both kind of like water, right? They're both technically the same compound. So what happens is, um, a raindrop drops pretty fast down to the ground, while the mist settles very slowly. So this is just an easy way to remember that uh, the greater the volume, the greater the size, the greater the terminal velocity, right? So that's that. All right, so that concludes uh, what we wanted to say, and um, that is the concept of terminal velocity. Please remember that uh, you have to be aware of this sort of uh, force distribution or force layout that happens and the resulting graphs that you get from here. So that's the important stuff for today's discussion, all right? So yes, that's it. That's the end of terminal velocity. We are up with time. Uh, any questions, guys? Uh, if you have any questions or if you have any uh, points or queries, please feel free to ask us. Uh, we're here to ask. Okay, we have a question. Why does the gradient of the curve in, uh, in the acceleration time graph decrease with time? Well, basically because of the acceleration, uh, the amount of velocity change decreases because when you're traveling really fast, uh, the air resistance increases really rapidly. However, at higher speeds, this air resistance doesn't increase with that rate because you now the difference in speed between like 3, 4, 5 is less compared to the difference in speed between 1 and 2. So with time, basically, at constant time. So hence, it leads to a curve sort of graph. So yes, it's, you could say it's a, some sort of an exponential sort of decrease. That's something also uh, an A2 student asked a few moments ago. All right. If you have any more questions, please feel free to ask. And again, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the bot we have on our Facebook Messenger, please do that. It will remind you when we have classes. And also, um, if you see something which is useful here, please share it. share it with your friends and everyone. And yes, we have a lot of resources on YouTube and also on our website. So if you need any of that, feel free to access it. Any queries or any opinions or anything that you would like to ask to make things better, please feel free. And yes. That is the end of our discussion about terminal velocity.